Good morning, Rutherford County. My name is Stefanza McIntyre, and I'm with my friend Jovelle Clark. Uh, we're members of the Word of Faith Fellowship, and we're here this morning to talk to you about Black Lives Matter, which you've all probably heard of, and we would like to share some truth with you that we found out about this organization that differs from our beliefs and probably what you will find that differs be, uh, from your belief also. And for our radio listeners, we're both black men. Um, That's right. So, of course, and you fathers know. Too. And fathers, too. And fathers. Thank you. <laughs> and fathers. So, <laughs> um, but I would like to start this before we begin explaining Black Lives Matter to you. There was a scripture that God spoke to me, and I'd like to share that with you. It's in Hosea 4, verses 6. Uh, the beginning part of that scripture says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So hopefully today we'll get knowledge about Black Lives Matter and we can see it with uh, clarity. Yes. Uh, again, good morning, Rutherford County. Um, we are black men um, and we just want to make it clear that we support black lives. We yes. support black businesses. We support uh, black communities. We support black wealth. That's what we want to see. However, we do not support the Black Lives, Lives Matter, Matter movement or the organization, basically for what they stand for. And a lot of what they talk about, what they have done has been against our Christianity beliefs. Exactly. Um, you know, on the surface, it looks like Black Lives Matter is supporting or spearheading social justice reform. You know, it looks like a very good thing on the outside. Right. However, the more we've gone in, we've we've dug into the organization, we've, you know, picked apart exactly what they're standing for. We come to find out it is very godless and it, it is totally contrary to what the word of God teaches us. And so, um, you know, the, the, the movement of we see the crime that's been going on, all the looting, the quote unquote protesting, the, the, the violence, the burning of the cities. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King did not advocate for such deeds to be done to True. promote social justice. Exactly. You know, he did not do that. He exactly. called for peace. It was a peaceful exactly. protest. And that's not what we're seeing among our community. And unfortunately, in a lot of these urban areas, it, it, it's it's the black people that are suffering. It's the exactly. black businesses that's been burnt down. Exactly. Um, and, and, and that's not that's not God. That is, that is not the way things should be done. And so, um, you know, what we found out about Black Lives Matter, again, is how much it is against Christianity. And I think you have several talking points that, you know, we're going to go over. So um, just yes. to be clear, we we support the black community. We're Absolutely. black. Our, our wives are black. Our children are black. So, Absolutely. So, but we don't support the Black Lives Matter movement. And we even support your families, those of you out there That's are right. black. That's so right. <laughs> we're in this together. That's right. Um you know, one thing I've uh, seen, uh, Javel, when you, when you get to talking about Christianity, you know, riding along the roads, I've seen churches out with signs, you know, Black Lives Matter. Right. And after knowing the truth about it, 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 it really grieves the heart because I see the blindness that's on our people. That's right. You know, that's right. And it's, it's given me a passion to really to want to get the word out. Uh, which is the reason I'm sitting in this seat today That's right. uh, because I love my people. And That's right. That's we right. want to fight to exactly. help prosper, progress our people for the better right. in whatever way I can. That's right. Or we can. That's right. So, uh, one thing, uh, not, not that I'm going to cut you off, but no, go ahead. One, one of the issues that uh, we found out, I went to the Black Lives Matter website, okay, and right. uh, this is prior to them taking down this web page, okay? Right. And it stood for, it said, what we believe. And there's a list of things, a list of issues that, you know, Black Lives Matter organization, they promote. And one of the key things that I thought was very essential that everyone should be a know is it says we, uh, and actually it's in quotes, it says, um, it says we, you know, Black Lives Matter disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement. And for those who don't know, the nuclear family structure requirement is the father, the mother, and the children in the home. That's right. Now, you know as well as I do, you, you know, you're older than I am. Uh, the biggest issue that plagues the black community 
is the lack of the father, the father in, in the, the home. home. Exactly. And that is one of the biggest things that has led to so much crime, dropout exactly. rates, whatever whatever it may be, is because of lack of the father. So when you say we're we're against or we disrupt the nuclear family requirements, you you're advocating for the main issue that hurts our communities. Exactly. That's right. You're going against the very things that we want. That's right. And again, that's what I've seen, you know, even coming up, you know, myself. Um, I've seen so many homes where the father was in the home um, and married at a young age with the support of his children, you know, with the support that he give his children along with his wife. I see the fruit of the children. And then I've seen a lot um, where children were not raised with father in the home right. and the outcome of those children is like night and day. Like you say, the crime, the um, the lack of, in some cases, morale. That's right. You know, right. they don't have that support they need. I mean, so in the black neighborhood, that is very important. You know, when I take like myself coming up, you know, I was in that category. You know, that's right. Uh, I see a lot with us black men. We're not stable. We're not satisfied being in one place. We would like to be here. We want to be here. We want to go there. You know what I'm saying? And then we got children here and there. Right. And we're just, we're, we're absent. And that's, you know? and that's not the godly structure. That no, is. God never intended no. it to be that way. Absolutely not. You know, that kills the strength. That's right. You know, that a that's child right. needs in order to grow. Absolutely. It's like them being malnurtured. That's right. And, and, and I just want to be clear about something. You know, this is uh, not a, a political agenda of what we're addressing. But I do want to make a quote. Uh, or a point, I'm sorry, to emphasize a quote from former President Barack Obama. And I think it's very clear, and he was spot on when he made this comment uh, years ago in doing his presidency. And he, and this is what I quote, it says, we know the statistics that children who grow up without a father are five times more likely to live in poverty and commit crimes, nine times more likely to uh, drop out of schools, and 20 times more likely to end up in prison. And was he not right? I he mean, was point on. He, he, he point on that the, this is what the statistics show. So when you're an organization that says we disrupt the nuclear family, you're just not nuclear fa against nuclear family. You are against nuclear black family. That's exactly the, the That's very right. essence of what we need to foster, you know, well nurtured children in our society. And uh, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm reference to an article that I wrote and, I, and I, there was a lot of talking points that I hit on. And this is one thing that struck hard to me is the simple fact of when you're against the black family is and that's what builds up the community and not to make this a history lesson but i'm kind of getting off track here oh, but, we need to know this. <laughs> but if you if you look back doing slavery what did slave owners do when there was a black family they were it's separated dis exactly disrupted them. they that's were exactly they were right. sold off to different uh uh slave owners exactly and that kept them down that that that, that destroyed them totally it's, it destroyed their identity and it destroyed to know who they are and, and took away education. And so when you advocate for this type of uh, political or just this agenda, it hurts the black community and it doesn't build them up. And not only, I mean, just the lack of the father, I mean, it increases poverty. Uh, you know, right. what are the, the, the chances? Not, not, some, not saying that they won't, but when it comes to children going to college, you know, aspiring to be something bigger. When the father's not in the home, he's not being present, right. who is going to push him? I mean, thank God we have mentors. Thank God we have ministers. But for those who don't have that type of structure, what do they have to have to go to? And so the black father, the, the, the family is essential to be uh, there together. That's exactly right. And, you know, and not to critique um, black fathers, Again, because I'm one myself, right. but there's a thing of laziness. Right. I've had it. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I've had it, that laziness, where we don't want to take the responsibility and, you know, to be there with that child 
mm-hmm. to nourish that child, you know. That's right. That's right. Once they see that, I mean, they have that structure. They'll want to, you know what I'm saying? They'll That's follow right. in those footsteps. Absolutely. Because I see once I changed and made that difference, you know, I see the difference in my children at twenty, at 30 and 24. And then I look at my life at the age of 30 and 24. It's like night and day. Oh, it's night and day. You know, it's I had nothing. I had to make a decision to actually work and support my family and be there for my family. I mean, we have had to run hurdles any. Family right. will in order to stay together Absolutely. because the devil, just because you're married, Absolutely. you know, honestly ain't going to just walk away and because you're happy. I mean, he's going to throw stuff right. in the family to try That's to right. break it down. And, and, and kind of the the uh, piggyback off what you're saying, you know, um, and you remember this, you know, my son, my, my son, he's uh, 10 years old now. He was diagnosed with cancer years ago. And I would hate to think what it would have been like knowing that me and my he wife wasn't. weren't together and I wasn't there in the home to see how he would go through such a time. So the father is the strength of the family. And so we, we have to make sure, you know, we cannot support organizations and agendas that promote this type of agenda. Um, now, the next talking point that uh, I, w- I really want to touch on is the founders, particularly uh, we're talking about Patrice Cullors. Alicia Garza, and I'm not quite sure how you pronounce her name, but uh, Opal Tamidi, they all advocate and, and boldly say that they're trained Marxists. Right. Now, that I don't know about you, but that scares me. It does. To, to be a trained Marxist, and for, for those who don't know, Karl Marx was an atheist. Right. So, and, and, and again, we're, we're talking about the church here. We're talking about the church that supports Black Lives Matter. Whether you're a, a black church, white church, it doesn't matter. We're talking about right. the community of the church. You know, if you know anything about Marxism, okay, and Karl Marx, first of all, he was an atheist, so he's anti-God. Why would we support that type of uh, manifesto, okay, of being anti-God, anti-religion, okay? But here's a problem. You know, people don't realize that under Marxism, you know, there was suppression and persecution of of uh, religion, okay, right. millions, actually over 100 million people perished under Marxism. We saw increased poverty levels under Marxism. So right. w- when you are saying that you are a trained Marxist, what are you trying to promote? And again, we as a church, the body of Christ, again, like I said, whether you're black, a black church, white church, we're all God's children, okay? How can we as a church advocate for an organization that says we're supporting black lives that does the very opposite the one of the biggest issues of, within the black community is the high rate of poverty right. and so when you're going to support marxism you're pushing that agenda of poverty the main goal right. that that the Mar- marxism was trying to to push was bigger government okay bigger government control and basically suppression of the poor right exactly and people don't 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 see that that part of it. That's right. You know, that's a government not allowed. It's putting you in a box, that's you right. know, where you're not allowed to excel to where you know what I'm saying, to the desire that you would like to. That's right. Anti capitalists. The, exactly. They are anti capitalists. Exactly. And, and you know as well as I do, I mean that's what has built the wealth of the, of this country. Uh, even for black people, for black owners, if it's not for capitalism, you know, we wouldn't have black owned businesses. We that's wouldn't right. have, that's you right. know, black CEOs and, and, or executives. And that's what we need. We need more of those in our society. So when you're advocating, saying that we are trained Marxists, you're tearing down the potential of black wealth and closing that income gap. Right. And then another thing that hits me on that point, JaVale, they pray on people that's been oppressed. That's right. You know, just like blacks. You know, at one point in history, there was slavery. You know, so that's the point that they're using that oppression from back then to prey on us today. Well, what's the reality of it? We're no longer in slavery. That's right. What's the reality of the day? There's nothing holding us back from getting what we want. Surely, there's going to be hurdles. That's right. That, you know what I'm saying? We you have to hurdle. Through. Everyone has to that's go it. With anybody, black or white. I've seen it black and white. That's right. But opportunity is there. This is a land of freedom. I mean, 
prosperity. It's here. Marxism would totally destroy it. And it would put us, in other words, instead of taking us forward, where they try to proclaim it's going to happen, we're actually going to be going backwards. And we don't want that. No. So again, these the, the, the founders of Black Lives Matter, BLM, however you want to call it, they are trained Marxists. They, they openly say that, and, and this is what they're pushing for, is a, a Marxist agenda. And that's not what we need in the black community. And so we really need the church to, to wake up and, and stand up against uh, this, this type of uh, manifesto that's being you know, pushed to the black community. You know, I, I really question, you know, um, I read an article that said that Black Lives Matter raised billion, over a billion dollars worldwide, okay, from all organizations from other countries right. across the world. How much of that money has gone into the black community to build it up? Okay, exactly. you're saying Black Lives Matter. Okay, do they really matter to you? Where is that money going? Exactly, exactly. So I mean, it, 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 that's a problem. That, that's something I had. Now that, that's a good point, <laughs> Javale. <laughs> now a, a, another uh, a talk point. I know this is he, uh, heavy on your heart, Stefanza, is anti-police, and and, and I want to make this clear that we as black men we support our law enforcement. That's right. And, and so those in, in Rutherford County, we, we love you. We support you. We thank you for what you're doing on the front lines. We, we advocate for you. We love our policemen. That's right. Um, and we just cannot say enough about you. And we need That's you right. to continue to do what you're doing. Please don't give up. That's uh, right. Stay strong. But this is a problem. You know, the Black Lives Matter agenda, their, their organization is, they want to not, now it's defund. At first it was abolished. Okay, right. they want to abolish the police. Now it's more defunding. Right. I mean, I know that you being from uh, Wilmington, I mean, I know you've seen a lot of problems. I'm being from Saginaw, Michigan. One of the biggest things that I noticed in the in the neighborhood where I lived in was the lack of policing. And where you have lack of policing, more crime, more crimes. That's, exactly. That's just obvious and evident. Look at the, the look at the statistics now in the urban areas. Where there is lack of policing, the crime has increased and will continue to increase unless there is law and order. You know, and and just on that point of policemen, um, they try to paint a picture of police as crime. You know, as the criminals. Mm -hmm. You know, how right. much further from the truth can you be? That's right. You know, that's right. I mean, with all truths being said, you get. Bad apples in every bun. Absolutely. But now we're talking, you, but you can't take that and sweep the whole police department because right. that is just, I mean, it's just not truth. But people are receiving that, you know. And, um, um, I mean, it's just unbelievable. It's, it's almost mind-blowing seeing the deception that's here in front of us and the amount of people that are receiving it. That's right. You know, it, it, it's mind blowing. If we didn't have the police, who are we going to call? That's right. You know, that's right. these are guys that risk their lives that's right. every morning that's right. when they get out of bed. Absolutely. You know, truly not knowing whether they're making home that's right. or not. I think that takes a passion. That's right. I think that takes a heart for people, you know, and I respect that to the highs. So, um, like I said, I support them 100%. That's right. That's um, right. And and as as the black community, what we what we cannot do, and like you said, is continue to think or push this narrative that white policemen are racist, uh, because that's that's not true. Uh, like you said, there are some bad policemen. We know that it's it's obvious. Uh, we've seen that uh, on social media, but we sure. cannot we cannot uh, say that about all policemen within our communities because it's not true. Um, we. We need more policemen within our community uh, to make sure we stay safe against exactly. the, the, the criminals. Um, now, the other talking point, and I, I know you're you're pretty uh, strong on this one, is abortion. Abortion. Uh, that is something that the the, the Black Lives Matter movement uh, supports. They push that narrative, and and, and that's a problem. It is because it's disproportionately, we know that. Out of any uh, racial category, it's that's black right. people that are boarded the most. Exactly. That's exactly right. So how right. can you say black lives matter when you are against the unborn that are black? Exactly. Exactly. Um, and what people may not realize, you know, I've looked at the abortion clinics. You know, 79%, I was shocked, 79% of the abortion clinics placed in 
your black southern mm-hmm. neighborhoods. That's I mean, true. that was heartbreaking to me, you know, and it was it was eye opening. Yeah. So if black lives matter, I mean, think about all the lives that have been destroyed, innocent lives. The Bible even speaks about the shedding of innocent blood That's right. in the land. That's, That's right. what's happening here, y'all. That's right. The shedding of innocent blood. Um, and I know it's even in the black um, women right. population. Thir- the black women, 13% of the population. Black women are 13% of the population. But yet, we're they're 31% of the abortion. And if you can correct me if I'm wrong, in the city of New York, mm-hmm. in what 2014, 2016? Oh, I, I have the stat here. The, here here's the stat, mind blowing. Okay, between 2014, 2016, okay, there were 118,000 babies born. We're talking about black, African American, 118,000 born. However, it says 136,000 were aborted. So, 118,000 were born, the mothers kept them, but 136,000. 136,000. That's appalling. You know, and when you've got an organization that's pro abortion, when the black lives are the ones that's mostly being destroyed, that's right. How can we, as a black people, throw out support? behind such an organization absolutely it's hard for me to see it is it is now this is something that i was pretty appalled at um uh, one of the talking points that i have is when i research black lives matter um they have some very uh pagan practices that um, a lot of people and so this is one of the things you know we we talked about you know you said you saw the signs of churches having black lives matter the organization well when i did some research uh and i'm going to read some excerpts from my actual article because it gives a little bit more detail but uh uh patrice colors uh, did an interview she's one of the founders of the black lives matter movement right and there's a, a lady by the name of melina abdullah she right. is a professor at california state university Okay, right. and she teaches Pan African studies. Right. So they did a Zoom meeting, uh, this interview, and in this particular meeting, they go on to say that they basically employ and call upon the the, the spirits of right. the individuals who were killed, invoking their spirits so that they will promote and use the spirits to fight social injustice. Now I had heard about that, but when I actually went to the video and read it. That was something to hear from the horse's mouth. Okay, right. that that's a big problem because if you know anything, being you know men of God, uh, any Christian would know that invoking spirit of the dead is spiritualism, and that is against the word of God. Um, and in their term, and I won't say the actual term what they say, but it says um, we say their name, we say the, her name uh, as a phrase used in West African Yoruba religion, which I'm not going to say the the phrase, um, right. but they do this, okay, to invoke divine forces as a method to invoke the spirits of the dead and fight for social justice. Um, they openly say at their core, at the core of the movement, it is a spiritual movement. So they openly say it's exactly. spiritual. That's okay? right. Okay, um, and basically calling on deceased individuals. They actually go to the site where, let's say, uh, where a black person was killed, uh, due to violence, whatever it may, may be, they right. go to that particular site and they pour libations. And for those who don't know, a libation is a drink offering to deities. Okay, so they're, they're performing these libations. They're chanting and saying the names, invoking spirits. I actually looked online and saw uh, Miss Abdullah actually performing a seance at a Methodist church. And so many people went along with it and she poured libations, invoking the spirits of the dead. Now, I have a problem with that. I do too. Because you're doing this in the house of God. <laughs> exactly and you're right. advocating and saying we're fighting social justice with demonic spirits. That's exactly what you're saying. Uh, just to give you some scripture verses reference to the word of God. Um, King Saul actually died in this trespass and sin. I think this is uh, what Second Chronicles 10.13. Uh, right. Um, one, for not obeying the word of the Lord, but he consulted a medium. Okay, he went to a, a, a witch and basically called for the spirit of Samuel to get wisdom. I, I don't get that. Okay? Exactly. exactly. Um, so that, that's in, uh, in Chronicles. Leviticus 19.31 states that God has ordered us not to seek out spiritualists, lest we be defiled by them. 
2 Kings 21, 6, okay, talks about King Manasseh, and we know what type of king he was. Right. Okay. But Weak. King Manasseh, extremely wicked, I mean, killed his children, but exactly. the things that he did, um, it says he did evil in the sight of the Lord, okay, for consulting with mediums. If y'all don't know, mediums are, again, those who invoke the spirits of the dead. So how can we as black people, and a lot of us are God-fearing, we're, we're children of God, support or organization that pushes forth paganistic practices? You know, we have a friend who's uh, from West Africa in Ghana, and he literally That's said right. in, this, in this town where he's from, this is exactly what, what they, they do perform. when they're performing human sacrifices. That is major. So we're we're seeing an indoctrination of West African religion, and they're using the pain of the black people to invoke this to exactly. teach us. You know, we as a church, we have to wake up. And again, I'm talking to the whole church. I'm talking to Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal. It, right. it, it, I'm talking to everyone. We cannot right. support this organization because it is against the Word of God. Right. And you know, you you just you mentioned Saul. Uh, you know, when he consulted that medium. Well, why did he do that? You right. know, he did that because the spirit of God left, left him. him. It left him. That's right. So that's when he turned to medium. I don't want that to ever happen to no, me. Absolutely not. You know, when I'm looking for direction in my life, I want my eyes turned to God to Almighty God. for my Jesus. answers. That's exactly right. You know, I know. That's exactly, that's exactly right. But again, that lack of knowledge that is in the church. You know, there's a scripture that says about waking up, you know, and right. becoming sober. Right. Um, Absolutely. can't remember. But we need to wake up as a church. That's right. And not be deceived. You know, that's what happened in the first book of the Bible in Genesis, you know, with Eve. That's right. You know. That's right. Now that the truth has been told, you know, Satan come to her. Has that's God right. really Maybe said too. You know, that's right. that questioning, that questioning. That's right. And we see what's happening in Black Lives Matter. We see what happened in the areas where they gain control. We see, right. We've seen the violence. Uh, one minister went in and talked about the drugs, uh -huh. the unclean that's that right. happened in those in those areas. It that's was right. anything but God. Right. And we as Christians have got to wake up and know that's where right. our uh Support yeah, or well, our exactly. energy is where it's coming from. Where it's, you know, exactly. I, I have a scripture verse uh, in, in Matthew 7, uh, 15 through 20, and it is talking about the, the false prophets. And, and to me, when I look at Black Lives Matter, it I equate them to the false prophets because they're advocating, exactly. they're, they're supporting our black communities, but yet what their agenda is tearing us down. And so in Matthew 7, uh, uh, starting in verse 15, it says, Beware of the false prophets, teachers. And by the way, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, from y'all who don't know. It says, Who come to you dressed as sheep. In other words, That's they right. come to us dressed as if they are helping us. That's right. And it says, Appearing gentle and innocent, but inwardly are ravenous, ravenous as wolves. It says, By their fruit you will recognize them. That is, by their contrite, I'm sorry, contrived doctrine and self-focus says do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles even so every healthy tree bears good fruit That's but right. the unhealthy tree bears bad fruit and that is one thing we can see with black lives matter we're seeing bad fruit we exactly. see that they are not promoting exactly uh advocating or pushing pro pro black people of doing well in this country um and so, again, you judge a tree by its fruit. That's and, right. And the fruit that we're seeing is not good fruit. It's not. Um, so, it looks like our time is getting close. Uh, Rutherford County, we just want to tell you thank you for listening in. Yes. Uh, we deeply appreciate you. Uh, to the law enforcement, thank you for what you're doing. Uh, please continue to uh, visit us on Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays from 8.30 to 9 o'clock. And we just thank you so much, Rutherford County. Y'all have a blessed day.